Good evening, everyone, and welcome along to the VCO Studio Show. For the last time in 2020, a very happy Christmas to you all. It has been an intense year of esports racing, uh, thanks mainly to the COVID crisis, accelerating the world of esports into many, many households that didn't know it existed before. It meant Formula One could only actually start in July and uh, ended after 17 races in December, late December, which meant the F1 Esports was a little bit delayed after that. And finally, just a few days before Christmas, they crowned their champion. And that's the man that joins us this evening, Jano Otmir. It's great to have a world champion with us. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm obviously feeling amazing. Uh, first world championship in 16 years of racing. So uh, very happy with that, of course. Um, I would say Avenue was changed a bit, of course, this year with the pandemic as well. Uh, last year it was in uh, in London in the Gfinity Arena and this year everything was online. So uh, yeah, quite a bit of a change, but uh, yeah, I adapted quite well to it. Yeah, we'll go into details about your F1 season in just a little bit, but I want to kind of rewind back to the very early days for you in motorsport. Where did your love for motorsport begin? Um, yeah, my, my father and my uncle and my grandfather were all um, into karting. And um, yeah, uh, as soon as I hit the age of four, uh, I started uh, go-karting as well. And uh, it basically went from, uh, from a hobby to a, a very serious hobby and more. So um, yeah, basically uh, I just got, uh, got put into a kart and then, then uh, I got into love at racing. So very much real world motorsport to, to begin with. Uh, where did the virtual online stuff uh, first catch your attention? Uh, when I got into uh, Formula cars, I had to prepare for, um, for race weekends, of course, uh, in simulators. And quite soon on, I noticed um, that compared to other drivers, I, I was always very fast in a simulator. Um, so yeah, there were several drivers who said to me, oh, you should try uh, uh, eSports because you're really good in it. And then um, my real life uh, racing career ended uh, because I didn't have enough sponsor budget to continue. So I was like, all right, I can try and qualify for F1 eSports in, in 2018. Um, and I failed for it the first time because um, I didn't qualify for uh, for the pro draft. And then I uh, basically got a call up from, from Renault again saying, uh, we want you uh, for a tryout uh, in Enstone uh, for F1 Esports team. And um, I absolutely smashed, smashed the tryout. So um, uh, they picked me for 2019. And then uh, for 2020, I made a transfer to Alfa Romeo Racing Orland. And that's how I came here. So presumably when you were training for race weekends in the real world, you weren't using F1 Esports as, as your platform. Why did you decide uh, to become a, a pro driver in that particular series? Uh, no, you're obviously using uh, like R-Factor Pro and these kind of uh, simulations. Um, but yeah, F1 is, um, since I'm a kid, my, my main goal, of course. Um, so yeah, for me, it's something I look up to. And that's why I basically chose for, for the F1 game. Um, so yeah, that's how I uh, got into it. Uh, it took me very long to get fast, of course, as it's quite a bit different. But um, yeah, I, I practiced a lot and um, eventually got fast in it. And obviously a little bit of real world experience. How did the world of F1 esports compare to what you were used to uh, in your real world coming into a team, having a mechanics and people around you. I know some teams in F1 Esports are, are pretty large these days, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I think Vlutje has been growing really fast over the past uh, one to two years. Um, they're getting really big at this point, um, obviously because they are managing the F1, F1 teams. Um, so they're getting quite quite some money in from there, uh, I assume. So. Um, yeah, uh, esports team are getting bigger and bigger as well uh, for content reasons as well, but also for the managing side of, of F1. So what does that mean for you as a driver then? What kind of support do you get? Um, yeah, I have the race engineers, of course, that I need uh, for strategy. That's so important in F1 esports. Um, the races are not very long. It's at maximum half an hour, I think so. So... Yeah, you have to make very quick decisions. And if you're just all by your own, um, 
you won't be able to to get the decisions right as uh, the gaps between uh, you and other people is really important um, to get the strategy right uh, you want to come out at exactly exactly the right place um, so yeah especially I would say the rage engineer side is super important and in terms of training and obviously having a great teammate was something that really worked out for you this year having a man that's already had so many years of wins and experience yeah uh, Danny Bresney was last year uh, the person with the most pole positions um, so I knew he was going to be fast in qualifying and I really had to up my game from last year to to this year um, because I felt like last year I lacked the most in qualifying I always had to fight my way through the field um, most of the time starting around P12, P11, P10 and then finishing up in P4, P3 or P5 um, so yeah it was really good that I had a very strong benchmark to to measure myself against and um, I think that's definitely helped me this year as I uh, reached Q3 um, 11 out of 12 times so um, yeah I think that was really important for me and so what do you put down as as the kind of the recipe for success this year over what you were used to at Renault last year? Uh, I would say definitely qualifying. I've improved a lot. Um, last year, my race pace and race craft was really good, I think so. Um, apart from some small incidents early on in the season. But uh, yeah, I think I, uh, I definitely improved my qualifying the most as I got uh, two poles this year, but I think also four or five second places in qualifying um, yeah. compared to only one pole uh, position last year. And you guys have to be so ultra precise every single lap because the the difference between pole and 15th position is tiny, tiny amounts, which is effectively being just that slightly too slow through a one apex or slightly offline in one place. Yeah, exactly. You just can simply not take it easy. Even in Q1, where only five people go out, uh, you have to be straight away on it. As um, I think in Austria and Japan, uh, the wall field was covered within two tenths. So um, you have to be on it every single lap. Otherwise, you're just not going into Q2 or Q3. We had a lot of uh, real world drivers trying out uh, the F1 game kind of full for real in lockdown and, and seeing some of these celebrity races what impact do you think they've had on that platform and and the way that the game feels and has changed uh yeah i think especially at the start this really struggled because there's a certain way of course you have to drive and there's some small tricks you have to learn uh, and i think someone who really improved uh over the exhibition races uh was george russell of course um who was spinning around in the first few races and then uh, winning and only being half a second of the esports space uh, at some point. So, um, yeah, he's someone who I think really showed that uh, if you just practice a lot, you can you can, you can be up there. Uh, obviously, he has the experience from real life and uh, he's quite good at adapting. Um, but I still think it's, it really showed uh, that just by practice, you can get there. And how was it being in the same races, being in the same servers? as guys like that obviously you've had many races as just pure uh esports competition but those lockdown races where everyone was mixed together must have been great fun yeah of course that was great fun uh, the real world and the esports world mixing together was uh, i think quite cool uh as, as especially for the sim races i think so uh, it's really cool to to show that they're faster than the, the f1 drivers um yeah, that, that makes obviously perfect sense because this is our job. So we're supposed to be faster. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's just just amazing. Yeah. And the, the kind of just responsibility that you guys have now representing a Formula One team in your wildest dreams, uh, that must have been something that just never seemed like a reality uh, when you're a bit younger. Yeah, as a kid, it was obviously a dream to, to represent an, an official Formula One team. Um, and then in 2017, I was in, involved with the Renault Formula One junior team, of course, which is a dream come true. And now to be um, representing Alfa Romeo um, together with uh, people like Kimi Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi and Robert Kubica, of course. Um, yeah, that's uh, a dream come true, of course, as you, uh, as I grew up watching those guys on, on television, of course. Um, yeah. in Formula One. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and how does that experience of being at 
part of the Renault, Renault Junior team compared to what you're doing now. Is there genuinely the same kind of pride and feeling? Uh, no, I would say what I'm doing now um, has a lot more pride and feeling um, because yeah. I won for the first time an F1 Esports Championship, of, of course, uh, or a World Championship. So, um, yeah, I'm obviously very proud of that. And also to be uh, beating my teammate who last year got the most poles uh, is a really, really good feeling. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely more proud of my achievements this year than uh, of 2017 and the Renault Academy. But you must still have an itch to get back into a real world car. Is is that the ultimate end game and goal is to become a professional real world driver as well as sim driver? Uh, yeah, if I, if I could somehow uh, get into Formula One, it would be great, of course. Um, but at the moment, my uh, F1 Esports career is, is my full time job. Um, so, yeah, of course, I will um, look into real world experience if I can get one. Um, but uh, I really want to take it serious if I do and not um, do it half-hearted as, uh, as yeah, uh, I just give 100% for F1 Esports as well. And I want to do the same if I get an, another opportunity somewhere else. But it must be great to be in a team like Veloce where they do have uh, so many different opportunities for you. I know you, they threw you into a uh, the V10 League for the last round and, and uh, with the likes of James Baldwin having real world experience as well and, and uh, many of the founders having real world experience. It must be a, a good, suitable place for you. Yeah, I really enjoyed the V10R uh, car. Uh, it, was, it was a great car and um, yeah, pushing uh, together with James for, for the win. Uh, which we did quite well. We won the we won that that round um, with Yas Heat, and um, yeah, it was it wasn't easy, of course. But we practiced really hard. Um, uh, we simply had to because all the other teams already had experience from the past rounds. But still, um, me and James were uh, I got pulled by three turns to James, who was in P two, and I think uh, to P three there was like a half a second gap. So we really nailed the qualifying, and then we nailed the races as well. And did that give you a bit of a taster for potentially being a pro sim driver in other platforms as well? Obviously, that was on R Factor 2, but the opportunity to go and do some other platforms, uh, tempting? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm definitely going to look into other competitions in, in the off-season, as uh, F1 is only from most of the time from September to December. So uh, I'm not mm -hmm. sure what exactly yet. It might be Vita and R League or... Uh, Lama Esports, I'm not sure yet. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to look into it in, in the coming days and weeks and uh, see what I can do on, on other platforms, surely. Um, have you spoken to James much about it? Because obviously that's something that uh, he's has done over the last couple of years and then combined it with real world. So it must be a kind of guy that you look to and go, yeah, you've got, you've got something that would be quite cool to be part of. Yeah, yeah, he won Lamar Esports, of course, which I think is biggest yeah. esports achievement, if I if I'm correct, and then also uh, or or his world's fastest gamer, I forgot about that, of course, um, but yeah, and then um, doing F1 Esports and the GT3 um, Championship, I think it was British uh, GT3, uh, which he yeah. almost won. Um, yeah. So yeah, he's doing a lot of different stuff. Um, I'm not looking to do as much stuff as I, as I said before, I want to give 100% and not do it uh, half-hearted. Um, so yeah, I, I do want to do a similar kind of things to, as James, um, but I do want to give 100% and give, my chance, give myself a chance to win. So do you look at the drivers that do flit around from different platforms and, and don't necessarily have a single focus? Someone like, uh, off the top of my head, uh, Nikodem Riznewski at Williams, he's uh, one week in race room, the next week he's on R Factor 2 and uh, he's always moving about. Do you not feel, therefore, do you think that that's not a recommended way to approach things because you, you can't give 100%? Um, well, if you can do it, then yes, of course. Um... <laughs> I, I've also done TTM Esports uh, Championship uh, on the race room, um, but as I only had a few hours to prepare, um, that went absolutely terrible. So I don't want to do that anymore with without a lot of practice, as it was yeah. one day after uh, event two of F1 Esports. So I literally had no time to practice for it. 
Um, so yeah, that's the kind of scenario I want to avoid. Uh, I really want to go f uh, fully for it um, and uh, give myself a chance to win um, with with proper practice, of course. <laughs> Uh, usually at this point in the in our interview, we kind of look at the rigs that everybody's using. I can kind of see what you've got there. Um, it's, it brings me a very good point. You mentioned the fact that you were racing uh, effectively at home this year for F1 Esports versus the stadium environment. Uh, how do you think that changed the, com the competition dynamic? Um, well, we still had to use the same wheelbase um, as, okay. uh, as they could see it from... Uh, from settings, I think, so something like that. Uh, same for the pedals, uh, but then everything else um, you could choose yourself. So uh, I was using a 240 hertz uh, monitor as that's pretty much the best you can get at the moment. I know there's some uh, other esports where they, I think, use 360 hertz. Um, but yeah, this was one of the best I could get. And then uh, place it ultimate um, as I want to sit in a formula style uh, position because that's what I'm pretty much used to over the past few years. Yeah. So even if you're on doing uh, other events on other platforms, you'll always be using that same rig. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, if it will be a LAN event, I will have to use something else. But um, yeah, everything online, I just do in the same rig. And how do you find those LAN events jumping into, okay, when you're jumping in F1 Esports, it's supposed to be the same as what you've been practicing on, uh, the same that you've got there at home. Uh, but how do you find having to adapt to the different hardwares? Um, yeah, I think that's a different kind of skill. I, I really enjoyed that last year. Uh, I think I was really good at it as well um, because last year I had the personal best lap times from people and compared it to the poll times we were, or me myself, I was much closer to my personal best than other people. So uh, I'm quite excited to see what I can do uh, next year uh, in a LAN event, if there is, of course, um, because I think I was really good at that. Uh, uh, also, I just really enjoyed being around uh, the people um, you usually yeah. play online with. So um, yeah, it's, it's, I really hope uh, we go back to LAN events uh, next year. Say, so you, you miss that kind of element of pressure of, the event rather than just kind of popping upstairs and jumping on just, even if it was uh, big, heavy, this is the championship, it didn't necessarily feel the same without the, st the stadium and the lights. Yeah, I would say the stadium made me feel a bit more relaxed sometimes because I had people to talk to and um, the Gfinity Arena is quite close to a lot of shops so you can just go to Starbucks or whatever. It's quite relaxing um, to just uh, hop around uh, uh, to, to other things a little bit. <laughs> uh, so what is up for the future for you where, where are your your plans now that you've ticked that box of becoming the world champion um where would you like to move to or what do you see yourself doing in 2021 uh i want to defend my title of course uh next year uh when i become f1 esports champion again um i think uh, I would like to do the 24 hour virtual Lama again, try to win that as I finished fifth uh, this year. And um, I'm not sure what, el what other championships I can do from uh, January until September, basically. Um, but uh, if I participate in one, I definitely want to give my myself a chance to win and uh, really go for it. Well, perhaps you should join us on the VCO Pro Sim Series. Um, I know that there's probably an invitation sitting at your doorstep uh, to join some pro in uh, real world driving. So that'd be great fun to have you along uh, if you can get yourself enough practice on iRacing, of course. Um, Jano, thank you very much for joining us. It's been really great to chat with you. And again, uh, congratulations. It probably hasn't sunk in yet that you're world champion, has it? Uh, it has, it has, because, uh, yeah, obviously going into the last event, I knew I had a big chance because I had quite a decent yeah. lead. And then it fell away a little bit after the first race, but in the second race I won. And then going into the last one, uh, I knew there was a very, very big chance I was going to win it. So, uh, yeah, it definitely hasn't, has sunken in because, uh, yeah, I just felt it coming, so. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, again, congratulations and uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, here on the VTO Studio Show. We uh, 
Uh, love to combine the world of real and virtual, and uh, Jano Otmir is absolutely the man that has managed to do that uh, over the last couple of years, and excited to see and follow the story um, uh, over the next few to come. This is, as I said, the last VCO studio of the year. Um, we're going to take a couple of weeks off over Christmas, but there will be plenty of things for you to follow on VCO uh, across the Christmas period. Uh, on the 26th, it is the Simi Awards. Uh, and Yano is up for best esports driver against some of the best in iRacing and R Factor 2. Can't wait to see uh, whether that's a trophy, another one for Yano. Uh, and then on the 2nd of January, the starting the new year as we mean to go on with round four of the VCO Pro Sim Series. So I hope you are able to join us uh, and do have a fantastic Christmas uh, out there. Um, thank you very much for supporting us here at VCO. And uh, once more, uh, congratulations to our F1 Esports World Champion, uh, Jano Otmir. Thank you. Bye-bye everyone, have a happy Christmas.